Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. This episode is brought to you by Leaders Credit Union. With nine branches in West Tennessee and nationwide ATM and branch access, you can take leaders with you wherever you go. Thanks, Emily, and welcome everybody to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Emily, before I introduce today's very special guests, what's something you've discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? So something that I discovered this week was that most of our arrowheads in our Native American gallery were donated by Aaron B. Clement, who collected more than 15,000 Native American artifacts. That is really interesting, and it's interesting you're talking about the past, because our special guest today, we're going to talk about both the past and the future of our home here in Union City, Tennessee, I'm really excited to have Dave Ring. Welcome, Dave. And along with Dave is Ethan Hogan with Windermere Management. Welcome, Dave. So tell me a little bit about your past here with Union City, Tennessee. Okay, Scott. Well, thank you very much for your interest in having me. It's very much appreciated. Um, You probably detect quite quickly that I'm going to have a strong accent. Uh, My relation to Union City is my grandmother grew up in Union City and she was the daughter of Dr. William Nailing, who was a doctor starting around 1900, practicing, was here forever. And uh, we do have an interesting building, which we, the family calls the hospital building, which is the center of the downtown. It's a classic brick building, but uh, unfortunately it's been uh, neglected for a number of years. And uh, fortunately, I was able to sell the family business, which is based in Massachusetts, Um, basically uh, coding medical devices of all things with the connection with uh, Dr. Nailing and uh, what the family did. Uh, But the building actually had to be renovated dramatically. It was built around 1900. Uh, My great grandfather passed away in 1952. So it's been used for multiple uses over the years, no longer a hospital, obviously commercial applications, but it really had to be refurbished. And uh, I bought out 23 other members of uh, the nailing uh, relatives. As you know, uh, sometimes when you have a committee, not too much gets done. So it it was a pride to have the the hospital building, but I also wanted to refurbish it and bring it up to its old uh, grandeur, if you will say. What was it most recently? It had multiple uses. It was uh, a hair salon was there, a travel agency was there, but gradually over the years, it was less and less uh, active use. Its last use was uh, for a drug rehab uh, meeting place. So it really had to be gutted and we've totally gutted the building, put structural steel in there and repointed all the bricks, roofing. I mean, it's just from soup to nuts, it was done. Now let's back up a little bit. So who was the first one who moved from down south to up north? My grandmother was. She um, was sent by the family to go to Boston to go to finishing school, along with her sister. And uh, actually three nailing girls went to Boston to go to finishing school. One uh, became president of her college Another went to uh, the New England Conservatory of Music. And at the time, my grandmother uh, eventually met my grandfather and proposed. And they came back to Union City, and she got married in 1919. And she got married here in Union City? She got married downtown Union City. And she always came back with a family. She ended up having four children, two boys, two girls. And my uncle and father and aunts would, would sometimes spend the summer in the Union City. And actually, uh, my father was inspired by my great-grandfather to become a, a surgeon someday or a doctor. And where uh, in Massachusetts? I know there's a way you're supposed to say that. Where in Massachusetts? I can't even say it. Ma- or you could say the Bay State. 
<laughs> you say that. So where in the Bay State did you did it, y'all live? In uh, Newton, Massachusetts, which is about seven miles from uh, downtown Boston. Okay. And you and I talked earlier about how I've got a lot of friends who live up that way, and hearing your accent, you know, makes me miss them a little bit. Right. Well, I'm trying to tone it down. <laughs> you, 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 don't, you don't have to do that to fit in here. In the city. Um, so how often did you yourself as a young boy get back here to the area? I came back about four times, and I did work, uh, after I graduated from college, I did work one summer at the nailing uh, lumber mill which helped me get finally make it to California. But it was a great time to uh, meet a lot of the people, connect with a lot of second cousins, and get to know the area and understand uh, the nailings involvement in, the, in uh, Union City itself. And so I'm sure a lot of people that grew up in Union City, you know, knew of the nailings and remember the name. And sure. Um, so it'll be interesting to, to hear your thoughts. Uh, what do you remember about Union City and, and the area that that building is in now? What do you remember about that from back then? Um, it's kind of a blur because since they had, they had so many friends that I kept on meeting a family. And this is this is Ima's grandson. This is Miss Ima's grandson, David. And, uh, I'd come down for about, I didn't come down for the whole summer. What the times I remember most was working at the lumber yard and it was a lot of fun. Oh, that's excellent. It really was. Do you remember the building specifically? Uh, The nailing, uh, the hospital building? Yeah. yeah. I remember going in there. I remember seeing my uncle had a uh, law office there. Um, I don't really specifically remember a lot about it. More like the people and how nice the people were. But my, uh, my uncle has told me a lot of stories of what Union City was like in the uh, 30s and 40s of how it was really a bustling downtown. And uh, you really had to fight for a parking space even then, all the activity uh, in the early 40s uh, during World War II. And he also describes uh, when he was a kid walking from my great-grandparents' home and they were friends uh, with people that owned the theater. And they'd give an eight-year-old a Coke, a popcorn and it was one place that had air conditioning at the Capitol Theater and he just was in having a ball just absolutely having a ball and so you and your family through the years um, obviously as you know inheritances happen and families grow and and uh, you guys kept a foot in Union City through that building correct Um, what what sparked your interest in having anything to do with it beyond just reading about it well, I was fortunate enough to sell a family business, which had to deal with the, the medical industry. Some of our customers were Johnson Johnson, Medtronic, and just the quote unquote hospital building. My father did want to become a, a doctor, unfortunately he became a type one diabetic when he was 12. And the advantage of moving to Boston was Jocelyn was uh, working on uh, diabetes and, and uh, the insulin. It was very new and he may not have made it, if he uh, was born far from Boston, it really uh, saved his life in many respects. Uh, in those days, you'd be lucky to make 30 if you were a type one diabetic. So because of the great grandfather connection, uh, family business with the uh, the medical, this beautiful location, the tradition, I says, and plus I have the connection with uh, Ethan Watson Hogan, does a beautiful do- job of uh, refurbishing the, the building. And so uh, when you came up with this idea that you wanted to uh, refurbish the building and, and do something with it, uh, what did the rest of your family, did they say, you're crazy, what, what are you thinking? Or, were they enthusiastic? Or? <laughs> when you're a businessman, you're always considered crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of them are relieved. A lot of them are proud that, that uh, we're going to rehab the building back to a its original intent or not intent but uh grandeur yeah no that's fantastic i know that a lot of people are excited about uh what it's going to do for union city and what it's going to do for the entire region similar to discovery park you know right so it's uh it's a very very exciting time for all of us that live here in the community uh we're going to talk to ethan when we get back from the break and we're going to talk a little bit about about what the vision for the building is Thank you. 
Leaders Credit Union is a not-for-profit credit union in business to help you move forward on your financial journey with an innovative mobile app, nine West Tennessee branches, and over 80,000 surcharge-free ATMs, you can take leaders with you wherever you go. Great rates and service, fee-free checking accounts, home loans, absolutely. They're happy to help. Visit leaderscu.com to learn more. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. This is your host, Scott Williams, and our guest today is Dave Ring and Ethan Hogan, and we're talking about the Nailing Building in downtown Union City. So, Ethan, tell me a little bit about where you came from. Um, I grew up in a very similar area as David. I grew up in Massachusetts as well. Um, That's where one of our connections came from was the fact that I was local to him um, back when he was operating the family business. Um, I grew up, uh, most of my time was spent in actual Boston. um, And that's where I actually gained a lot of my knowledge within the property side of things as well as the construction uh, so do you remember your first uh, time you laid eyes on the building what did you think um it was about three or four years ago when i came down to first look at the project and see if it was something that we could take on and and be a part of um at that time it seems like more of a, a a rehab type of situation where it was more Let's get it back to somewhat of a standing building. Let's see if we can lease out a couple of spaces, make it an actual income property rather than just, you know, something that's just falling down in the center of town. Um, I know back then uh, we didn't have anything close to the ideas that David has put forward for the ideas of grandeur and and glory that this once was. And, And talking with people in town over the past couple of years, it seems like the nailing building was a big part of a lot of people's histories and their growing up, them being a part of downtown and going to downtown. I know many stories of people wanting to watch the Christmas parade go by and they would sit on the second floor of the nailing building in the front and watch the Christmas parades go by, which is a very cool thing to feel that history within that type of building, you know. And as you pointed out, the nailing building is visible as soon as you walk in Discovery Park on the mural that, that's on the wall. Well, it, it, it's been here for such a long time. And, and I know Doc has been such a, an important figure within the community, especially back then when it was such a small community before it experienced this big boom in the 30s and 40s. It's really nice to know that we're trying to bring something back to the community that's been lost for a long time. Um, you know, something that's a sense of, um, a gathering place, you know, and something that the nailings can be proud of. Uh, so Dave, tell me what, what was your original vision when you first said, here's what I want to turn this building into. Uh, what did you look into the future and see? What's a major crossroads for the town? Uh, it had to be rehabbed, but hopefully a, a sandwich coffee shop, some place where people can meet. You've got the courthouse, you've got the town hall, you've got the police station right there. So some place where you can grab a cup of coffee or a little bit of lunch. And uh, it's just a, a meeting place. So it's little, create a little more activity downtown. Okay. And then um, Ethan, tell me a little bit about what you foresee, what is this going to look and feel like? I know a lot of people like myself, even I ride my bike past there a lot of times and, and, uh, you know, I'm super curious, uh, you know, everybody in a small town, I know this is a surprise. There's a lot of gossip and a lot of, here's what's going to happen. And, you know, here, everybody's super excited about it, but maybe you can, uh, shed some light on exactly what are we going to see there? Let's say two years from now. Well, I know with the original plan, it was more of just a rehab to see if we can get in a couple of different leasing opportunities, especially as it is an available building. It was it was somewhat standing and it needed a few things taken care of. But over a couple of weeks, we kind of discussed between ourselves uh, something that would be a little more grandeur and a little more 
you know, something that would bring back that that feeling during the 30s, 40s, 50s and 60s when downtown Union City was the place to be, the place to go, you know, restaurants, uh, bars, uh all the everyone after church would go immediately to downtown so we were thinking originally okay something like a coffee shop sandwich something where people can come and conjugate and now with all the infrastructure and input that we've been doing we're looking more as something that's um more as a modern upscale type of environment where there's a lot more uh heavier uh, modern design, um, steel, brick, uh, drywall, where it's, it's, it's now more of a modern look. And I think when we, we started talking more and more, I think our scale became larger and larger and larger. And that's where we've kind of gotten to be now, where we're looking to create a mixed use building, where on the ground floor, it's gonna be a commercial space. Um, We've even set off a, a little section of, of one of our buildings as well for executive suites, which is, um, you know, office spaces for, for different individuals, as well as residential upstairs. Um, you know, ultra modern, uh, very high end type of luxury apartments. And about how many apartments? 27. Wow, that's incredible. And obviously, when you have 27 uh, couples, individuals, or families moving into an area, that generates more uh, retail, more restaurants, and things like that. Absolutely. That's what we're hopeful of. We really hope that from this, it kind of shows what can happen when you do invest a little bit of money into downtown. You know, you can really change the landscape of what it can be. Um, it doesn't need to be stagnant for, for 10, 15, 20 years. You can do small little changes here and there, whether it's just changing up a storefront or adding windows in the second floor, newer modern windows, simple stuff like that. But it, it really does change the look of what that building really is. And I think that's what's been kind of lost over the last couple of years is people see big numbers and they go, I can't do that. That's not something I can take on. But in reality, you can do it in parcels. So, you know, a little bit here, let's let's get a new floor in there. You know, something like that where you're just trying to spend just a little bit, but it reflects in a long way where you really help keep that building going. You know, and we, we've got enough of a classic look downtown that really deserves to be kept and preserved but there's ways where you can modernize it, make it look like it's used constantly. You know, right now, a lot of that upper buildings aren't utilized to their best ability. Sure. And, and a lot of, uh, in, throughout the region, a lot of small towns are revitalizing and they're finding that people living in, in the upstairs and retail in the downstairs, you know, there's some beautiful small towns in the, in the area so absolutely i think that it's it's not just investment from individuals but it's also an investment for the town you know the town really reflects positively when it creates more of a community meeting place you know you want somewhere where you can have people come downtown and be i'm proud of this this is something that i want to show off someone visiting from kentucky Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, even all the way up to Massachusetts. You want to bring them downtown, Union City, and say, look, this is where I live. Well, and with a quarter million visitors every year to Discovery Park, once people leave here, they're always looking for some place to go eat or shop. Or, and we actually had a lady that uh, came by, stopped by our info table not too long ago, and said that she loved Discovery Park so much and loved visiting that she uh, checked with a real estate agent and bought a house here and is going to uh, summer here. Um, and I've got some other friends who picked Union City just as retirees. They like the region. They like the proximity to Real Foot Lake. They like the feeling of the community. And so they settled here. So now, um, how much of the time do you live here, Ethan? I spend a lot of time here. I actually purchased a home down here and I spend most of my time making sure that the project is going smoothly. Um, we operate 
up and down the East Coast. So a lot of time I'm working from home, but I, I'm in town, I'm around town, I'm meeting with people and I'm interacting with a lot of the people within the community. Um, a lot of my time is spent with, you know, local government uh, individuals that are trying to also help change and bring newer ideas and updates to downtown as well. I know that there's um, a lot of uh, good push from the town council, from the mayor's office, from city manager, as well as the economic redevelopment boards and Main Street has been a huge help as well. So yeah, this, this um, one of the things I think about this area is that the folks that live and work here are really passionate about uh, hugely progress passionate. Yeah. and about, yeah, yeah. you know, hel helping this whole area grow. Uh, there's a lot of really good stuff happening. Absolutely. What, what's the biggest differences you found between Boston and Union City? I think it's a lot more of a community. I think with Boston, there's so many people. You find your little groups. You know, you find your, this is my group. This is a different group that I, I like to be a part of. Here, it's very much everyone is a community. Everyone is part of something that's one whole. And I think that's been a, a little bit of a change for me because I've been very much in more of an urban environment for most of my life. And so coming here, it's definitely changed my mentality, especially with trying to help redevelop downtown. It, it's kind of pushed me to think uh, farther outside of the box and come up with way different ideas to really focus on community aspects, you know, um, not so much just personal and individual uh, investment. Yeah, that's great. Uh, as somebody who's also not ever lived in, in a rural uh, area until now, you know, I can second that, that, you know, it is a really tight community and some really fascinating people as our Abs podcast guests. You Absolutely. Know, are to. Everyone has a story. Absolutely. And, and everyone is happy to share that story with you. Yeah. You just have to ask. Now, the only thing is, are you able, since you're in property management, are you able to get us a Thai restaurant here in Union City? I've had the restaurant suggestions sent to me for, <laughs> I've had a pizza shop. How many times I've have had, you heard the words Cracker Barrel? I know I, everybody's wanting I a Cracker think, Barrel. I think I'm up to about 100, <laughs> 150 at this point. I think every time I meet with someone, hey, the Cracker Barrel could go into that building as well. You know, I, I don't mind that at all. I'm happy to see if I can come up with something, but uh, it's more on the ideas of Cracker Barrel wanting to move to town, really. It's yeah, not. Well, once they see you, what you guys are doing, they're going to want to. Um, I'm going to ask you uh, a question, Dave. So you're connecting with this um, historic uh, building. Um, were you always interested in history and genealogy and connecting with your family, or is this new since you've sold your family business? No, I've always been interested in the family history. I've got another branch of the family that's almost equally as uh, interesting. Um, I majored in history in college, so. What, um, what, why do you think, why do you think it's important to preserve buildings like the nailing building? Well, if, if you're born and raised in Boston, you love keeping a gem. I think what makes a difference between Boston and New York is we keep the good stuff. They tear things down. And there's nothing like a nice brick building, brick building the back bay, Boston's north end. Some place where you can come out of your apartment, go around the corner, see a neighbor, get something to eat, and not even get in your car. It's just a nice feel to it. It makes for a nice, easy weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And so did you, um, have you been one of those people that actually uh, put your genealogy down in writing and you do some research and trace it all the way back? Or was that already done for you? I just listened as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Really what it amounts to. Yeah. And so your grandparents and parents, they were interested in history, apparently. Um some of them were, and, and my grandmother from Union City, she just says, she wasn't big in the history, she was very proud of her family, but she was always looking forward. And I think with this project, let's look forward and just enjoy what, what a nice historic building, but keep it going for another 30 years at least. Yeah, and so 30 years from now, what do you see going on there? I see a vibrant downtown. I see you got a nice um, 
area. It's a strong industrial base. I mean, when I first came here, my base is, my job was generally manufacturing. It's a healthy neighborhood. The industrial parks, the college down, uh, the next exit down. It wasn't just like, hey, the downtown was the only thing that's wrong with this area. If you revitalize the downtown, this is going to be an exciting place to live. Absolutely. Um, so do you live here very often? Are you back much in this area? I come back as needed about every two months. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Great. And so you've, have you uh, been exploring some of the areas around the restaurants? And, the, and I've, I've exploring, but I mostly, most of my time has been meeting uh, the people. Um, and, and seeing, connecting with some of my family that still remains in the area. Um, and this project takes a lot of time. It really does. No doubt. And uh, your investment in the area is much appreciated. You guys don't know this, but whenever I go to meetings or community meetings, everybody's talking about it. Yeah. So um, I feel like I can absolutely thank you on behalf of all the people yeah. that, I, that I talk to. Everybody's very, very excited. Yeah. Um, so uh, once you get finished with the project, are you going to be coming back uh, and, and enjoying your investment in our community? Oh, sure. I, I hope to. And who knows? We may, uh, may find another project or two. Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, of course, we here at Discovery Park uh, benefit greatly from any kind of development that goes on in the region. And, yeah. you know, we love partnering with everybody in West Tennessee right. on uh, getting getting more folks around here. So um, yeah. thank you for that as well. And Ethan, um, how about you? Once, uh, once the project is done, is, uh, will, will Union City still uh, benefit from your presence? Well, I believe so, as I've really started to get a little bit more involved with uh, actual planning and city planning with um, a few different members of uh, the city council. I know that uh, the town really wants to continue this development going forward. And um, I actually own a home down here. So for me, it, it's very easy for me to, to spend more time. Um, like David said, I'm hopeful that we can maybe do one, one or two more projects. But um, I, right now I'm, I'm very much splitting my time between this project uh, obviously my other work that goes on in the U.S. and then um, speaking with a lot of different people in town trying to get a sense of what can we do to really update, change, and, and, and move Union City forward, especially in the downtown business area, in the business district. Um, there's plenty of opportunity down there. There's plenty of buildings. There's plenty of willing owners that are, are ready to kind of renovate I think you you started to see that now with a few different shops starting to open down there that are, you know, trying to operate as a normalized business. But um, I think it requires a little bit more city planning and and development on 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 uh, Union City's part, where it it requires you know funding and drawn out plans and such so. sure and and you know those folks that are running stores and restaurants and that are there now i know are excited about the potential for even more revenue coming in their restaurants and stores and, and that's what this is gonna uh generate so. yeah absolutely i think there's the there's a lot of business owners down there that are willing and able to spend time and effort to really make a change in downtown i think in the last couple of years, I think the vision has been lost to Real Foot and Real Foot Avenue. Um, there's plenty of opportunity to build, expand, develop, and and really create an incredible downtown. Like you said, all these neighboring cities have started to really expand and and make their downtown their focal point. You know, that's what we're hopeful of Union City. You know, it's nice that David has spent all all his time and effort to really get this project in the nailing building going and and get started. But it, it shouldn't stop with just us. It really needs to keep going down the line where each one of these building owners gets involved with this, where it's, you know, it's a real community effort. 
So. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, and one building that comes to mind, I mean, I don't know much. I'm also a transplant, so, um, but I know the David Crockett building is right across the street from there. And it's a big, you know, large building that I know has been here for, you know, since the 50s. So um, that's yeah. a beautiful building as well, probably yeah, absolutely. On, the, on the inside. There's plenty of opportunities. It, it just... I think it's now down to the community to feel like, okay, it's time for us to get involved. You know, even if it's showing up to council meetings, telling your council member, no, I don't want that to be a part of what the community is going forward. And really kind of sharing their their own experiences because you encounter so many people and everyone has a story. You ask anyone in town, they'll have a story to tell you. You just have to sit there and listen to them. And I do think a lot of people think, what difference does it make? Why should I get involved? Why should I vote? Why should I go to my city council meeting? What difference does it make? So can you address that a little bit? What difference do you think it makes? It makes a huge difference. It really determines where you take your community from here. Are you going to have the same five people dictate how your community is run for the next 40 odd years? Why not get involved with that? Why not be a part of where the vision is for your town going forward? You know, we want people to stay. We want people to come back. We want people to be here and enjoying the environment that's here. If they're not enjoying it, you need to speak up and say, this isn't for us. We need to make a change. We need to move forward or we need to change this type of thing or we need to make an update. And that comes from city council. That comes from talking with your council people. That talks. That comes from you being involved in your community, you know. So, uh, Dave, I know that um, that uh, running your own business took an incredible amount of time, as I'm sure your family can attest to. Uh, were you able to get involved in your community before, you know, when you were so busy running a business, were you also involved in your local community? Uh, unfortunately, I was not. We had 45 employees, and the way I looked at it is if I uh, was able to play, employ 45 people, give them a good living, be a good neighbor. Um, I did not go to a lot of the stuff that Ethan recommends, although um, I'll never forget when I was building a second building, somebody at the uh, selectman says, uh, what is the name of your company again? They go, Ply Plastics. How come I've never heard of you? <laughs> I says that that's okay. That means I haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I I would just rather do. I mean, uh, proof is in the pudding. Let's let's see what the product looks like. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So yeah. you mentioned you mentioned other projects that you might get involved with. Are yeah. there now that you're re you're not retired? You're obviously working as hard as you were when you were working. But now yeah. that you don't have that. Um, what else is in your future? Are you traveling? Do you enjoy uh, any uh, uh, hobbies? Well, we'd like to travel some more, uh, but because of COVID, it's been tough. Uh, the grandchildren are taking a lot of our time. Uh, I do play with a bunch of old men in the ice hockey league. Oh, okay, great. So uh, yeah. that's, that's a lot of fun. Um, but my wife keeps on asking me, when are you really going to retire? <laughs> I bet. I bet. Now, yeah, we don't have yeah. a lot of ice hockey no, uh, yeah, no, here, it's, it's, here in uh, Union uh, City. Uh, Nashville Predators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. You could you could go right. you could go play. But if the pond freezes over, we slot around on our tennis shoes. Okay, give me a so, call. So you can <laughs> you can do that. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I was so excited to talk to you yeah. and hear more about this. Yeah. Um, what uh, is there uh, a timeline on when you think the project will be uh, completed? If a project like that is ever completed, I'll let Ethan ask, answer that okay. question. Ethan, tell us tell us. Timeline. I know in construction and projects like this, timeline is in, you know, pencil. Yeah. Um, our goal is to finish by the end of the year. Oh, We're wow. aiming for the end of the year. Um, you can see by our progress this last couple of weeks, we've already established first and second level on the new building um, with all foundations, all new steel, all new steel purlings and all new flooring. Um, We'll be hopefully finishing the, the roof system within the next week as well. So that will start to be enclosed rather quickly um, and just keep moving forward. Um, most of our stuff is dealing with 
the common time delays in the construction field that most people are feeling nowadays where most things are six or seven weeks out. Yeah. So we've been very good at trying to get ourselves all planned out, kind of lining ourselves up and and uh, all of our subcontractors are ready to go. So um, now if are you guys uh, showing uh, samples of it yet to people who are interested? So when we're ready, what we we were planning on doing was having an open house where we show off two apartments, a single bedroom and a double bedroom. And then that way, anyone in town, whoever wants to come show up on those two days, come see whatever I'm happy to show you myself. I'll have people there to kind of walk you through stuff and you can walk it yourself. I'll have the info sheets and all of that. Um, but that way it allows everyone in town the opportunity to see what this type of build is, how, how it's different from anything else that's in the area or in the region itself as well. And really kind of creating a lot of good buzz, uh, excitement you know, about what's going on for, for this building. So Well, you can count on me to come. I'll come for sure. I'll have the lease papers right off to your right. When you leave, all you do is fill it out and flip it over and make a pile with it. Oh, man. I, you count on it. Absolutely. Um, and, Absolutely. And thank you for uh, taking some time out of your busy schedule to be here today, Ethan. Absolutely. And thank you... Uh, Dave for joining us and I'm so excited to have you here in our community and so grateful for what you're doing. Yeah, thank you very much Scott. I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody that we've come in contact with Union City. They've all been great. No complaints. That's great to right. hear. Thank you very much. And thank you to all you listeners who joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. Discovery Park of America.